All right, guys, welcome to the show. I got a busy one for you. So um, we have Tucker Carlson taking shots at Jon Stewart. And man, he seems salty at the moment. So we'll get to that. We also have a pro-Palestine Jew, actually the guy who founded J Street. Uh, he goes on CNN and man, he drops a truth bomb right on their heads. It, it's I'm actually shocked they let this guy on the air. Because he absolutely goes inski. So we'll talk about that. We have Biden's new pathetic uh, outreach to the youth. It's like the worst idea you can possibly imagine at this late date to try to get youth voters. Uh, Mr. Live and Let Live, Dave Rubin, uh, flips one of his core beliefs on us. Classic. This guy's an absolute mess. And then uh, later on in the show... Ilhan Omar absolutely dog walks the head of one of the universities that had the uh, had the pro-Palestine protests, and then you had violent Zionist counter-protesters jump in and start committing all sorts of crimes. Ilhan Omar takes this dude to the woodshed and just absolutely lights him up. So that's a really, really uh, interesting video. We'll get to that later. Everybody do me a big favor. Please subscribe to the channel. It helps out massively. It costs you absolutely nothing. Um, and it, it means the world to me. So thank you very much for those of you who do. All right, let's go ahead and dive into it. So Tucker Carlson had PBD, Patrick Bed David, on his podcast. And uh, this, <laughs> this clip right here went kind of viral because apparently Tucker is just absolutely furious about Jon Stewart. He's incredibly pissy. Adam, so let's watch him. We'll break it down. John Stewart, uh, you know, well, let me tell you, you just got to stop. By the way, that would be a very good, interesting uh, uh, podcast and if you ever so do with John Stewart. Yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah, it would be, I mean, it would be interesting. I want to be a good sport I about it. I think the world I've, would watch it. Yeah, I mean, the world would watch all kinds of ugly things. I, But I just try to think, I have such contempt for him. I guess maybe that would make it hard. I like interviewing people I disagree with. Chris Cuomo, I interviewed. And, you know, I totally disagree with Chris Cuomo on so much, and I've made fun of him so much. I've been really mean to him. But I, I don't have contempt for Chris Cuomo at all, actually. Oh, my God. I love this. Chris Cuomo, by literally any way you measure it, is far more loathsome than Jon Stewart. I mean, the blatant journalistic malpractice covering for his brother on CNN as his brother was making decisions that led to the deaths of all these senior citizens because of his shitty COVID policies where he sent COVID positive nursing home patients back into the nursing homes and then COVID would rip through the nursing homes. There's no way that Jon Stewart is worse in any imaginable way than Chris Cuomo. But by the way, PBD recently hired Chris Cuomo. And so now Tucker is sort of like, sucking up to PBD and pretending like, well, now since, you know, Chris Cuomo is part of our sphere, like the alternative media sphere, oh, yeah, I don't mind having a conversation with him, even though I disagree with him. It's the class, like, I'm all about conversations, except when it's somebody like John Stewart. Definitely not with him. Definitely not with him. Oh, that's so easily. Okay. But John Stewart, I have total contempt for him. I don't, I think he's like, if I just, I don't I have no respect at all. And I never have. And that hasn't changed in the 20 years since I last saw him. So it's it's hard to interview. Have you ever interviewed someone you have no respect for at all? Of course. It's hard. Of course it is. I don't like it. It's not easy. It's like, I don't give a shit what you say. Yeah. I mean, you're pathetic. Yeah. It's oh, not it's even not. your real name. Like everything about you is fake. You're just fake. And you're kind of a dumb person posing as a smart person. Like everything about it. Ugh, barf. <laughs> So I don't know if I could do that. That laugh at the end. Goodness gracious. <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like the fucking Wicked Witch of the West. Jesus Christ, man. Get it together. You're a mess. I think, the didn't Theo Vaughn call out Tucker's laugh right to his face? Like, you got that crazy laugh, dog. What the fuck is this? All right, so look. Why is he so salty? I think we know the answer. We're going to get to it in a minute. Also, exactly why he's so salty. But... Tucker, you can't get away with being this smug and this dismissive towards someone who's like a king of this political commentary world. You just can't do it. It's not a good look for you. It's just not. Because en anybody and everybody who's being honest can admit up front whether or not you agree with Jon Stewart. He's a fucking titan. This is why 
him and Bill O'Reilly had a thing where they would go on each other's shows and they would take friendly jabs and then they did a very famous debate. And because even Bill O'Reilly, who was the king of like conservative Republican political commentary, even he knew like, yeah, this is the guy, right? This is the one who's on the left, who makes good arguments, can rep that position and can spar in this arena. But Tucker showing nothing but pure hatred and contempt for Jon Stewart. Jon Stewart, by the way, he doesn't only have, it's not just left-wing fans. There's plenty of right-wing types who are like, yeah, I kind of like him. He's honest, he's authentic, he, he takes shots at both sides, he's against the corruption, he exposes the absurdity of the system. All these things that Tucker postures as himself being, Jon Stewart actually is. Okay, so now we get to the real answer. Why does he hate him? Well, Back when Tucker was on CNN and they had the show Crossfire, and I think it was him and Paul Begala, they would do the show. It was a classic left-right dynamic show, Democrat-Republican show. And um, it was like, you know, get in there and debate. Get in there and disagree. And the show got very poor ratings. And I think the reason why is it really, it wasn't really authentic. It was like Tucker was repping the position that he thought he had to rep because he's the Republican operative on the panel. Paul Begala was repping the Democratic position. He thought he had to rep because he's the Democratic operative on the panel. None of it was real. It was like WWE. If you get an actual left winger and an actual right winger, and they're both honest actors, and they're both authentic, you can have an interesting debate, for sure. But they weren't authentic. They weren't honest. They were just playing the role that they were assigned to play. And people can smell that from a fucking mile away, dog. And so, why does Tucker hate Jon Stewart? Very famous incident, Jon Stewart went on Crossfire and this happened. Back to Crossfire, we're talking to Jon Stewart who was just lecturing us on our moral inferiority. John, you're bumming us out. Tell us, what do you think of the Bill O'Reilly vibrator story? No, oh. I'm sorry, I don't. I'm here to, to confront you because we need help from the media and they're hurting us. I made a special effort to come on the show today because I have mentioned uh, this show as being uh, uh, bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not so much that it's bad as it's hurting America. <laughs> so I, I wanted to but come here today defense, let me, and say, wait, wait, no, I just, no, let me, here, here, here's just one, what I wanted to tell you guys. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> stop, 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 stop hurting America. Okay. I watch your show every day. And it kills me. I can tell you a lot. It's it. so, oh, it's so painful to watch. Your partisan, um, what do you call it, hacks. <laughs> That's why he hates him. Because Jon Stewart went on his show and ripped him a brand new asshole. And Tucker felt like he wasn't able to joust. He wasn't able to spar and defeat him. He wasn't able to get the best of him in the back and forth. That him and Paul Begala were absolutely humiliated. And uh, I think he's held that grudge for however many years it's been. This person right here says, Translation, John absolutely owned me on my own show decades ago, and I can't risk being embarrassed by him again. Look, I'll say to Tucker, that sounds spot on, bro. That sounds spot on. Now, you could prove everybody wrong and say, no, I think I'll own him. So I'll invite him on. I think I'll own him. But it looks like he's not going to do that. It looks like, Look, I would love to see it. You could even make it more formal. You could even make it more official, right? Make it a proper debate. You could do that. You can make it less formal and less official and do it more as just a conversation and hash out your differences. Or you can invite him on your podcast or he can invite you on The Daily Show or whatever. There's a million ways you could do it. You should do it. But I think Tucker genuinely feels like, you know, this is the jujitsu master and I'm just a purple belt or whatever and I can't. I just can't hang. That's what it feels like, Tucker. That's what it smells like, Tucker. You can prove everybody wrong and sign up for it. And let's watch it unfold. But it doesn't sound like you're up to it. It doesn't sound like you're up to it. By the way, also, I think it's the case that, you know, since then, John Stewart has taken shots at Tucker since then. But, you know, in my estimation, all the shots he's taken are perfectly legitimate. All the shots are, you know, correct. Calling out Tucker for what his whole shtick is. Look, the big thing that really ripped the mask off of Tucker is what came out in the uh, Dominion lawsuit against Fox News. The, I think it was a Dominion defamation lawsuit. And we had a little bit of the discovery phase that went on. And some internal correspondence got out. Fox News uh, back and forths, whether it be by email or text, 
where you could see internally what these guys are saying to each other and what they really believe. And people like Hannity and Laura Ingram and Tucker Carlson, they all made crystal clear they don't like Trump. Tucker especially. He said he hates Trump with a burning passion. He said he can't wait for this guy to go away so he doesn't have to talk about him every night. He despises Trump. He thought nothing positive came out of the Trump era. Um, he knew for sure that the whole rigged election thing was total horseshit. Wasn't true. He knew it wasn't true. He knew there were, like, psychos who were leading the charge on that. He called the Sidney Powell. He called these people out directly in this internal back and forth. And so that came out, and it showed, hey, man, here's what you're saying privately, and then here's what you're saying publicly, which is exactly the opposite. What you're saying publicly is playing footsie and trying to... And they literally admit at one point, like, man, we don't want to lose the audience, so what do we got to do? We got to find a way to, like, split the difference and sort of, like, keep them on board. We don't want to piss them off. That's why Jon Stewart has no respect for you. I guarantee you, if somebody were to get a hold of Jon Stewart's private correspondence, the things he's saying behind the scenes are exactly the thing that he's saying in front of the scenes. I have no doubt about that. None. And sometimes he takes shit publicly for saying things. Like, you know, the resistance liberals and the Democrats get pissed at him when he says, hey, man, Joe Biden is really fucking old. And you could see, you could tell, maybe he's not the guy. He shouldn't be the guy. He gets all sorts of shit. But he says, I'm sure of it, the same thing privately as he does publicly. Whereas Tucker, the exact opposite. And again, that's not opinion, that's a fact. We know that. So yeah, people who have the most scathing, sharp, and accurate criticisms, um, Tucker is now hostile to them. And it's, it's, it's particularly sad, right? Because it, it would have been interesting if he took the opposite approach. Said, yeah, you know, I don't agree with him. I don't particularly like him but I'm willing to have a debate and a discussion and defend whatever thing he thinks about me that is bad or whatever position I have, then that would have been interesting. But it's like he knows he can't step into the lion's den with that monster because he'll get ripped to shreds. And that's what I think the reality is. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.